on with his mission later on in the show. OK, time to move on. Now then, here is a question for you. How gullible do you think you are? Because recent research seems to suggest that we're incredibly prone to the power of suggestion. We just can't help ourselves. Anyway, we have set up an experiment to put that to the test. So I'm a pretty decisive person. I make my own decisions. I understand the reasons why I make the choices I do. Or do I? I mean, does anyone? I want to see if we can change the way people act without them realising they're being manipulated. We've asked members of the public to take part in a series of tests which are being run for us by psychologist Peter Naish. So, nothing nasty to do, so hopefully you'll be happy to stay right the way through. The participants are given a one-handed counting task. Ready, steady, go. They're told we're looking at left and right-handedness, but this is just a front. A second group of similar volunteers do the same test, but instead of boring old bits of paper... This is where we get you to count a pretty large pile of money. They get to count real banknotes. This is the only difference between the two groups. Let's see if that small difference can affect their behaviour. Now, we're going to give you some sweets. We've asked both groups to compare two bowls of sweets. What we want you to do is say which you find the most chocolatey, the most crunchy and so on. Given ten minutes to make their decisions, something rather interesting emerges. On the left, those who counted paper only eat enough to answer the questions. But the people who counted money just kept on eating. Amazingly, the group that handled the money ate 50% more of the sweets. It seems money can make you hungry. This effect is called priming, influencing a specific behaviour without the person being aware of it. But how can money have an effect on hunger? Well, money seems to trigger an innate desire. And in many ways, having money is the same as having resources. And back in the dim, distant past, resources meant food. Money and food are linked by the same basic urge to survive. You could argue that it's not that hard to change someone's hunger level. But my psychologist friend Peter tells me we can also change how people treat each other Again, without them realising they're being manipulated. I have to see this. First, we reinforce the priming. Both groups get an identical word task, except that, for one group, the words are related to money and wealth. Then, we secretly film them and watch their behaviour. As my friend struggles with a pile of papers, some of our volunteers stop to help her. But not everyone feels the need to help. Guess what? Those who handled the money are more likely to keep on walking. Oh man, that's really bad. <laughs> I'm an awful person. No, no. It's not that they're simply being unhelpful. Psychologists have studied this and found all kinds of subtleties. It just seems that money makes you more self-reliant. And self-reliant people expect other people to be self-reliant too. Our primed volunteers don't think my friend needs help with her drop papers. Money doesn't just change the way we feel about people. Apparently, it changes the way we feel, full stop. So, we're going to test that out here with a little ice-cold torture. <laughs> That's really painful. Right, it's time to see if our money priming has changed how much pain our volunteers feel. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's a bit nippy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, quite yeah, painful. There's no pressure, you can take it out whenever you're ready. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to... This is incredible. Well as a group, those who handle the money are coping in the icy water for twice as long as the group who handled the paper. If I stood here for an hour, would you kind of call an ambulance or something? I'd... <laughs> Researchers think that the reason for the pain-reducing effect of money is again due to psychological links. Money equals power, and power equals physical strength. So we've seen money affect hunger, helpfulness and pain thresholds. But could all this just be a coincidence? Well, yes, there is always that possibility, but several other studies have had similar findings. And a bit of number crunching on our own priming results show we can be 98.6% sure it was no fluke. They were pressing the right button in your brain, you didn't even know. That's scary. scary. <laughs> So the moral of the story is be careful who's messing with your mind because you might not always be doing things for the reasons that you think you are. Incredible. That is so interesting. Imagine mm. all the things that happen to you every day that might just influence your very next decision. That's a bit scary. I actually. think it's deeply scary. Yeah. But there's so much we don't know about human behaviour. In fact, recent research has shown that if you spend 10 minutes imagining uh, that you're a professor before you do a pub quiz, yeah. you'll actually do better. No way, that's yeah, brilliant. I'm going to try that out, definitely. Oh. And uh, don't you try and influence me now that you know 